Six years after journalists James Foley and three other American hostages were beheaded by ISIS militants, the Department of Justice has charged two men in connection with those murders. El Shafi El Shak and Alexander Cote appeared in federal court this afternoon. They were part of a group dubbed the Beatles because of their British accents. They're accused of leading a campaign that led to the torture and beheading of Western hostages they captured in Syria, including. James Foley. The two ISIS fighters were being held in Iraq by U.S. forces. They were recently transferred to Virginia, where they were indicted on eight federal charges. Five of them carry a mandatory life sentence if they are convicted. Today, I talked to James Foley's mother, Diane, about her son's legacy and her mission for justice. Uh, the charges today against the two ISIS militants represent the first time the American justice system has held Islamic State fighters accountable for the murder of U.S. citizens. What does this day mean for you and your family in terms of James' memory? We're hugely grateful. Hugely grateful for, um, to the FBI, Department of Justice, um, Attorney General Barr, as well as to the United Kingdom, their home secretaries, and Scotland Yard. Because with working together, we have the evidence we felt we needed to indict these two individuals. Diane, have you spoken with the other families, Stephen Sotloff's family, Peter Kassig and Kayla Mueller? How are they reacting to this news? Um, we're all on the same page. We've been um, going through this long, difficult journey together since 2013. So I know them well. We've been working together closer and closer, actually, since particularly in the last year, um, because we know that together we're stronger and we've tried to give a unified message to the Department of Justice as to how important um, this, um, the indictment of these two is to all of us. What does justice and accountability in this case mean to you? Without some deterrence, some accountability for crimes, criminals, terrorists, um, those who hate us um, will have total impunity and no problem continuing their reign of terror. So I think it's essential that we hold people accountable, that we find out the truth of who is culpable. These two um, hold a lot of information. Oh, also to the location of the remains of our, of our loved ones. The U.S. government, Diane, does not negotiate with captors, but European governments, as you said, have helped free citizens from ISIS by paying ransoms through intermediaries. You and other families have expressed frustration with the U.S. policy. What is the Foley Foundation doing to change this? Well, um, when the Obama administration um, did not bring home these four Americans and several others who were killed in 2014, their administration did issue a presidential policy directive. They really took the time to look at all their mistakes and to um, they realized they really needed to um, make more of a priority to the return of innocent Americans taken hostage abroad. So they started um, the current um, interagency fusion cell, special presidential envoy for hostages, and a hostage recovery group at the White House, which um, President Trump um, administration, to their credit, has continued. Diane, it's been six years since Jim's murder. How often do you think about him? I think of Jim every single day. Um, I pray to have the same courage he had to pursue the truth, to be steadfast, and try to make the return of innocent Americans, Americans who are kidnapped or unjustly detained throughout the world, a more of a priority for our government. And uh, we're very passionate about keeping journalists safe because we wouldn't know what's happening in the world without you and many other brave journalists. So I feel very committed to continue Jim's legacy. I feel in many ways this is what Jim would have done um, had he been able to return home.
Well, Diane, thank you so much for talking to us here on News Nation. Uh, we appreciate your time, and, and we certainly appreciate uh, the legacy that you continue to push forward uh, in your son's honor. Thank you. Thank you, Marnie, for your time. And Diane also wanted me to pass along to you the important work that James Foley Legacy Foundation is doing to protect journalists and also advocate for the safe return of hostages and detainees from all over the world. There is also a virtual freedom run coming up later this month. And to learn more about the foundation, James' story and legacy, and also sign up for the run, you can head to our website, newsnationnow.com. And I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, Faith has played a very big role in Diane's journey of grief over the last six years and she said my faith in God is my strength without a doubt and I know that is what kept Jim strong to the end today I rely on God for my strength and the goodness in other people so she's been through so much so have so many of those other families uh, but she's turning to her faith and she continues her mission for justice